guys. Good evening to you, and Merry Christmas to you. I trust that our time together will be uplifting and encouraging. Uh, you'll find yourself uh, praising God in your spirit, and your mind will carry you forth through the gospel before this service ends. God is good, and he's good all the time. And we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and we welcome each and every one present. And we thank you for being here. And those who are our guests, and at first time being with us as well, we're delighted that you've joined us as well. One of the most necessary points, if for some reason you need a restroom while you're here, uh, the best way to do it is to, to exit out to this side door where Kevin is right now going by and follow the light to the back of the building, and it will carry you to the restroom, okay? There is spray in there if you feel the need to spray before you... Uh, use it. It's all in there for you, but it's been clean and sanitized before you entered this building today. But uh, we just trust that today is a day in which we can worship the Lord and celebrate what all we have. We welcome those who are tuning in by stream and Facebook Live. We thank you for joining us as well and trust that you'll, your heart will be blessed by joining us uh, for this service. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We thank you that as we just bow in your presence that we recognize that your presence is a very warming and enduring and, and loving presence that invites us to this service to get a glimpse of Jesus, to get a glimpse of our Savior, to be able to look into the face of Jesus and see our own salvation, that we rejoice together and we understand that, that he is everything that we need. He's not only the bread of life, he's the living water. He's not only the shepherd, he is a mighty king. Recognizing that you are almighty God, a wonderful counselor and prince of peace. We celebrate you, we love you, we worship you, and we adore you this evening. And may everything that we do together in this service be that which points us heavenward and points us into the eyes of Jesus. In his name that we pray, amen. For yonder brings a new
Given how you follow that one up, buddy. I'm asking everybody to stand. There you go. <laughs> it's all standing single, little town of Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by. Scripture reading this evening is in Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Serenius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth in Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I, I bring to you good news of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. So it was that when the angels had gone away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it were marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary, she kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for the things that they had heard and seen and was told to them. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his precious word. Amen. Jesus. 
Jesus born. We didn't know you come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes were blind. We could not see. We didn't know who you were. Sweet little Jesus boy, born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, we didn't of a
wrap our injured flesh around you, breathe our air and walk our song. Drop our sin and make us holy, perfect Son of God, perfect Son. Your baby boy will one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby Calm a storm with his hand. Did you know your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? the great, the great Did you know 
future becomes a sign of hope. The measure for the love of God. The intersection of eternity and time. Did air such love and sorrow meet with thorns composed so rich a crown?
what's to come A baby changes everything Got a ring on her hand All her dreams and all her plans A baby changes everything Changes everything. And she loves, she's never touched. How would she keep his trust? The baby changes everything. Yes, the baby changes everything. There's a scripture in Luke 23, turns our attention from the celebration of birth to realize that Jesus was the only baby born to die. And as you look into Luke 23, verse 13, Then Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, he said to them, You have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people. And indeed, having examined him in, in your presence, I found no fault in this man concerning those things which you accuse him. No, neither did Herod, for I sent you back to him. And indeed, nothing worthy of death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for it was necessary for him to release one to them at the feast. And when they cried out at once, saying, Away with this man and release, us, release to us Barabbas, who has been thrown into prison for certain insurrection made in the city and for murder. Pilate, therefore, wishing to release Jesus again, called out to them, but they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. And over in verse 32, then there were two other criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. The criminals, one on the right and one on the left, and then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they divided the garments and cast lots. 
And the people stood looking on, but when the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers who mocked him, coming and offering to him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, then save yourselves. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals who were hung with them blasphemed him, saying, if, if you are the Christ, then save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him and said, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Again, may God bless the hearing and the reading of his precious word.
The gates and doors brought and all the windows fastened down. I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow, half in fear the day. Would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all the way. Then just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle, and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window, looked down into the street, expecting 
swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told me where she'd been. She said they moved him in the night and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away and now his body isn't there. So we both ran toward the garden, then John ran on ahead. We found the stone and the empty tomb, just the way that Mary said. But the winding sheet they wrapped him in was just an empty shell. And how aware they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Something strange had happened there, just what I did not know. John believed a miracle, but I just turned to go. Circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high. Cause I'd seen them crucify him, and I watched him die. Back inside the house again, all the guilt and anguish came. Everything I promised him just added to my shame. But at last he came to Joyce's. I denied I knew his name. And even if he was alive, it would never be the same. But suddenly the air was filled with strange and sweet perfume. Light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room. Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide. And I fell down on my knees. And I just clung to him and cried. Then he raised me to my feet. And as I looked into his eyes, love was shining out from him like sunlight. In the sky, guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet beliefs. And every fear I had just melted into peace. Amen to that. Thank you, Judy. Gracious. You know, that today we, we realize that as we light this last candle, this is a candle that not only represents the birth, but it represents his life. It represents that he is alive. And so Christmas is about the celebration of all that Jesus is. Not only was he born of a virgin, but he also died on that cross as a virgin from sin. As they realized that he was the lamb without spot and blemish, he would be the lamb that would be slain. And Jesus was the only, only baby on the face of this earth that was born to die. And if you would have been the only person on the face of this earth, he would have died for you. So thanks be unto God for all that we can celebrate today. And I hope that we have chronologically went through the music in your heart to represent the gospel message to its entirety 
in the service today. A little different than normal Christmas Eve service. I realize that. A little different because of the pandemic. So different that we always have the passing of light. And so we've had to create another passing of light for safety of everyone. As you entered the building, you should have been given a little, a little flash. Everybody get one? If you didn't, I need you to hold your hand up because we want you to have one. Did you not get one? All right, hang on to it. You got it? Well, what we're going to do, instead of the passing of the light that we traditionally do, lighting from the Christ candle, we realize that these little lights represent that we are the light of the world. The good news is you're not going to blow this light out. <laughs> you're going to take this light with you, and wherever you're in darkness, maybe you, during the night, tonight, on into the days ahead, you can just say, wait a minute, I need to be reminded that Jesus is the light. And he is the light of the world. And therefore, because he is the light of the world, we can be lit on fire from that luminary of who he is. So we want to traditionally close with a beautiful hymn of Silent Night. And we want you to stand together as we sing, and this will be our conclusion. And let's just sing a couple of stanzas of Silent Night. And then we'll, uh, as the Lord leaves, we'll close it out, right? Yeah. All right. So let's stand together. Let's sing this. Sing it with all your heart. Oh 